have come here to let the world know that we're finished with this kind of nonsense. We have not given up the boat. We have not given up for the couple of bucks. We didn't sell out God for that green power. It takes a lot of God. It takes a lot of stamina. It takes an awful lot of determination and stubbornness. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's get-together is to proclaim to the world we must keep the communities going. We must keep Jewish dignity going. We will go to Eretz Yisrael with Mashiach under the banner of the heavens of the Zutai. In the spring of 1940, a giant of a man arrived on these shores from war-torn Europe. Rabbi Joseph Isaac Schneerson, the Lubavitcher Rebbe, world-renowned for his self-sacrifice on behalf of the Jewish people. Immediately upon his arrival, the Rebbe made it clear that he had fled from the impending Holocaust not for his own safety, but to fulfill a mission in this free and blessed country. His task was to dispel the prevailing notion that America was different that somehow America was not a suitable milieu for the time-honored values of traditional Torah Judaism. He threw himself, body and soul, into the establishment of a dynamic American center of Torah true Jewish life, rising out of the ruins of the European Jewish communities. It was about this time that an American-born rabbinical student named Jacob Hecht was coming of age. His imagination, fired by the Rebbe's brilliant scholarship and passionate call to action, the young Rabbi Hecht was soon recognized for his leadership qualities and boundless energy. He worked with both of the Rebbe's sons-in-law, Rabbi Shmaryahu Gerari and Rabbi Menachem M. Schneerson, teaching in Talmud Torahs and in the first wave of Jewish release time classes for public school students. He received his rabbinical ordination from the Lubavitcher Yeshiva, in 1945, he married Chava Lasker, and at the age of 23, he was installed as rabbi and spiritual leader of Congregation Yeshiva Rabbi Meir Simcha HaKohen in East Flatbush, a position in which he was to serve faithfully for nearly five decades. The story is told that Rabbi Hecht actually didn't want the pulpit, that he preferred to devote himself strictly to Jewish education. When he reluctantly agreed to serve as temporary rabbi for six weeks, he decided to really give him hell, with all the fire and brimstone he could muster. Then surely they'd never ask him back. But the plan backfired. Now this, said the congregants, is a real rabbi. But the greatest honors and his greatest accomplishments were yet to come. For as executive vice president of the National Committee for Furtherance of Jewish Education, Rabbi Jacob J. Hecht was destined to lift up the hearts and minds and transform the lives of tens of thousands of people throughout the world. Release Time was the National Committee's first major undertaking. The controversial program in which public school students are excused from school one hour each week for religious education in the denomination of their choice was first approved by the New York State Legislature in 1940. But it was not until 1952 that the Supreme Court upheld its constitutionality. And even then, Rabbi Hecht had to fight an uphill battle to win over those in the Jewish community who mistakenly believed that release time posed a danger to Jewish education. Since then, with the help of God, generations have been saved from the ill winds of assimilation. In the course of 50 years, nearly 200,000 kids have attended release time classes. Many among them are now rabbis, teachers, and community leaders who otherwise would have remained ignorant of their heritage. In the 1950s, Rabbi Menachem Schneerson succeeded his father-in-law as Rebbe of the rapidly expanding Lubavitch movement. Rabbi Hecht's father, Samuel, was a wholesaler of dry goods on the Lower East Side. 
Like most fathers, he had hoped his son would enter the business. But the Lubavitcher Rebbe had other plans for the flamboyant young man. He's better suited to my business, the Rebbe said. And well suited he was. Under his inspired leadership, the National Committee initiated a series of projects which would continue to grow in the decades to come. In 1953, Camp Umuna was founded in the Catskill Mountains, a summer sleepaway camp for Jewish girls, the first of its kind, under the direction of Rebetzin Chava Hech. The word Emuna means faith, and the Camp Emuna experience has served through the years to reinforce the children's faith and appreciation of their heritage. Of the myriad projects undertaken by Rabbi Hech throughout his life, Camp Emuna always commanded a special place in his heart. Here, he was able to demonstrate on a daily basis the preciousness of every Jewish child, and he showered them with love and attention as a shepherd tends his flock. The release time program spawned a network of Mesibos Shabbos clubs and day camps to strengthen Jewish identity and the love of Judaism among children from assimilated backgrounds. Today, Machne Yisrael day camps are still thriving with a new branch recently opened in Brooklyn's Park Slope section. It was in 1954 that Rabbi Hecht began broadcasting his popular radio program, Shema Yisrael, utilizing the miracle of contemporary communications technology to deliver his incisive twice-weekly message on the beauty of a Torah way of life. With his anti shmad campaign, he waged fierce battle against the scourge of assimilation, intermarriage, and cults. And when he learned that insidious missionary movements had been targeting ailing and disabled Jewish children with their holiday season crusade, he jumped into the fray with toys for hospitalized children, bringing Hanukkah cheer to those unfortunate Jewish kids and a non-sectarian message of hope to Gentile children as well. Hanukkah is a time of miracles. You can have a miracle. Everything will be okay. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. Those who knew him know that nothing was more precious or more pleasurable to Rabbi Jacob J. Hecht than the art of giving. No distance was too great, no need too trivial for his magnanimous hand. When in 1958, Israel's Ministry of Religion made an urgent appeal for Sifrei Torah, he grasped the opportunity to give the most precious gift of all. He arranged to bring over 100 Torah scrolls to grateful communities in the Holy Land, and he laid the foundation for yet another vital project, the Colony of Hope, conceived as a home for orphaned, homeless, and destitute children. The completed structure later evolved into part of the Bet Rivka educational complex, and today serves as a dormitory for recently arrived Russian students in Israel. Of course, no sojourn in Israel would be complete without taking time out to pray at the holy sites. Returning to the United States, Rabbi Hecht turned his attention to the Jewish college student, searching for fulfillment in a secular marketplace. This was the turbulent 60s, a time of profound spiritual seeking among the youth, and it marked the inauguration of Hadar HaTorah Rabbinical Seminary, the world's first full-time yeshiva for young adults with little or no previous Torah education. The demand soon arose for a similar yeshiva for women, and that demand was met in the early 70s by the Machon Chana Women's Institute for Higher Learning. In 1978, Rabbi Hecht undertook what was perhaps the greatest challenge of his career, the dramatic emergency airlift of 992 Iranian Jewish children whose lives were endangered by the revolutionary regime of Ayatollah Khomeini. Once they had arrived safely in America, the National Committee spared no effort and no expense in placing these youngsters in hastily converted dormitories and in homes within the Jewish community and he provided them with a specially designed college preparatory curriculum to ease their transition into American society. Yet another breakthrough took place in 1985, the first year of the Ivy League Torah study program. Each year, an elite group of 70 students is selected from prestigious universities throughout the world 
to participate in an exciting, rigorous summer fellowship in Jewish studies. These are the future leaders of our Jewish communities, and for many, the Ivy League program is their first opportunity to learn and live the authentic, original teachings of Judaism. In recent years, the tragedy of alcohol and drug abuse has emerged as one of the most serious problems plaguing our society. Once again, the National Committee has taken a stand on the front lines of the battlefield with Operation Survival, a comprehensive, multi-ethnic, community-wide program of education and prevention. Operation Survival provides a model of cooperation among Brooklyn's Jewish, Black, and Hispanic communities. Sometimes someone who's not so familiar with the work of the National Committee will hear me speaking about Operation Survival, and he'll say, what does a drug abuse program have to do with Jewish education? And I'll answer, everything. Jewish education doesn't take place in some ivory tower. Jewish education is about the real world. It's about making this world a better place for all people to live together. Rabbi Hecht served as official interpreter for the Lubavitcher Rebbe's public addresses and Torah discourses, which are broadcast throughout the world. A difficult assignment, and one which he always approached with trepidation and humility. When one thinks back and looks back into the life of this individual, to this great personality, this should give the individual the strength and fulfillment back to the Rebbe. But his relationship with the Rebbe went beyond that of a devoted disciple and trusted emissary. He felt himself almost as a son. He officiated at all the Rebbe's rallies for children and at the Grand Lagba Oma parades. In 1989, he was master of ceremonies for this historic event, a live broadcast of an international Hanukkah celebration with satellite television linking up the simultaneous festivities in New York, in London, in Paris, at the Great Synagogue in Moscow, and at the western wall of the Temple Mount in the holy city of Jerusalem. Throughout Rabbi Hecht's illustrious career, Government leaders of every political persuasion considered him a close personal friend as well as a spiritual counselor and an outspoken advocate for the concerns of the Jewish community. He was a member of the President's Task Force on Volunteerism, a delegate to the White House Conferences on Education and Aging, an executive member of Morality and Media, honorary chaplain of Kings County Jewish War Veterans, senior chaplain of the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children, president of the International Council of Orthodox Rabbis, and he was appointed by Governor Mario Cuomo to the Suicide Prevention Committee and the Prince Commission for Judicial Review. He was a prolific communicator. His weekly newspaper columns and myriad publications touched the lives of countless thousands, including the Jewish children of the Soviet Union, who are just beginning to emerge from generations of religious oppression, and as a fiery orator, on the radio and in frequent speaking engagements on five continents, he had no peer. Yet he always made time for the individual in need to arrange an interest-free loan to help find a job, to provide counseling for a shaky marriage or a troubled child. <laughs>
To Rabbi Hecht, life was like a series of joyous wedding celebrations. He was a matchmaker, forever making marriages between bodies and souls, between heaven and earth, between those in need and those in a position to give, between Almighty God and his people Israel. Rabbi Jacob J. Hecht has been taken from us long before his time. We thought he would live forever, and in a sense he will through his accomplishments as we strive to walk in his footsteps and work for the betterment of all mankind. His name was Yaakov Yehuda, and in the days after his tragic passing, the Lubavitcher Rebbe Shlita explained at length the significance of his name. Yaakov was a father to all the Jewish people, a loving provider of divine inspiration. And Yehuda was the prince of the 12 tribes, a powerhouse who overcame all obstacles in his path. The National Committee for Furtherance of Jewish Education must carry on and go from strength to strength. With the encouragement and guidance of the Rebbe Shlita, the Executive Committee has resolved to expand and enhance every one of the National Committee's activities, beginning with Rabbi Hecht's very first project, the Release Time Program, and continuing with renewed emphasis on Camp Amuna and Camp Amuna Tiny Tots, and on the two yeshivas for adult beginners, Machon Chana and Hadar HaTorah. And the Rebbe has instructed that two of Rabbi Hecht's most precious projects should be renamed in his memory, Camp Amuna Benos Yaakov Yehuda, and Hadar HaTorah Rabbinical Seminary, Yeshiva Kol Yaakov Yehuda. These are challenging, difficult times. Those who knew Rabbi Hecht in his lifetime and those who will come to know of him since his passing must strive together to continue the work he began and to overcome all obstacles as he himself would have done. Even in the midst of adversity, when the average man might have felt overwhelmed, Rabbi Hecht always managed to find a way to roll up his sleeves and strengthen his faith to transform the most mundane concerns into a heartfelt prayer for the redemption of mankind. I know from myself when I don't pay my bills on time, and I never do, I always get a statement that says with a red stamp, ask to please remit. The Bainish it's past due for the Shia. Please remit now. To help each person that he found in need To him no task was menial To him no task was tall As our captain he stood ready for his call We stand today in tribute To our tower of a man A force so strong has left us all alone a life so full of giving, never asking in return. A life so full of fire, a life so full of strength. A life. Come